Hello everybody, my name is Justin. Welcome back to the studio. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bifold wallet without having to scab any T-pockets. So if you've made a bifold wallet before, you know the back pockets are usually T-slots. And that T-slot needs to be scabbed down so the thickness of the leather doesn't impact the front pocket. Now, scabbing down that T-pocket can be a bit of a pain in the butt if you don't have really sharp tools or you just maybe haven't scabbed enough so you're not that proficient at it and you can end up ruining pieces of leather because you scab too deep, you carve it out. It can just be a real pain in the butt. And I'll be honest, I don't like skiving. Um, I avoid it whenever I can uh, because I don't really like doing it. So when I was designing this wallet, I thought, how can I make a two, how can I make a front pocket and a back pocket without a T-slot? So I'm gonna show you how to make a bifold wallet without a T-slot. Plans are in the description below. Head over to the website get those and let's get into it. So if you've got your plans downloaded, you're going to see that you get the main panel laid out with five mil stitch spacing for this plan. And then I've also included little tick marks for the top of each pocket. So you can easily mark that instead of having to line up your pieces once they're cut and then mark it that way. I've included those on the plans. I've also got the front pocket with the five mil stitch space in and then the back pocket along with the three marks you'll have to make on this piece. That is more of a guide because you're going to be gluing the front pocket to the back piece first and then you'll punch through so you don't need to necessarily mark these. They're just more there for visual reference. So you know everything's lining up properly. That's assuming you're using a five mil irons. If you're using another distance, then you'll just line the top to tooth up with the pocket top and punch down as normal. So the leather I'm working with for this one is a natural Mexico and a green Mexico, just like Pueblo, just from a different tannery. So I'm going to get these pieces cut out and then we'll come back once we're ready to start putting everything together.
So you've probably noticed by now, the way I make a bifold without having to sky of it is I just don't make the back pocket a T pocket. So it goes all the way down, gets stitched, and you end up with a nice little corner detail where you can see that contrasting leather color, if it's a contrasting color, you can see a nice edge in there once that's all polished up. Now, obviously the condition here is that since you don't have the T pocket and I'm not adding the stitch in here, the card is going to slide all the way to the bottom. Now, in my practical experience, the card may sit slightly lower than it normally would, but it still functions just fine to hold cards in there. Or, since it's not stitched, you can then fit cash. So, long story short, that's how I get rid of the tea pocket. Skyving necessity, I just make the back pockets full. Now, if you do want those cards only, you're going to want to add that T slot, but if you stitch, you're going to see the stitch on the outside of this panel. So, lots to consider if you're making a bifold in certain styles. This is how I like to do it. So now we just have to take care of the edges on the top of each of the pockets and then we can glue together our two pocket pieces. We'll punch those and then I'm going to double punch so I'm then going to punch the outside. If you don't do that you can then glue these together and then punch straight through. So here's where our guide on our main piece will come in handy. So if we put this down on our piece, we can mark the top marks here. That will represent this piece. And then on each of our back panels, we can use the same guide. Make sure it's lined up and then we can mark the top of our front pocket. And that way we know where to rough up the surface and then add the glue. Alternatively, you can just 
line up your actual pocket piece if you want and make those marks but it is included on the pattern if you want to use that. Okay, so our exterior panel is punched. Two pocket panels are punched. Now we can glue them both together. Always remember when you've pre-punched, like I have, you're gonna wanna make sure the glue stays between the stitch holes and the edge. Try not to get any glue on top of the stitch holes because that just kind of gums up the uh, threading process. Uh, and if you're using a, um, if you're using a contact cement, it makes uh, stitching almost impossible because that contact cement gets so hard you can't push the needle through. This is uh, the glue I'm using is uh, Eco Stick 1816B is the specific uh, brand of glue. It's a water-based glue so it stays kind of pliable and sticky 
So even if I do completely cover the hole, I can still manage to get the needle through. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, but I can still thread it. If I was using contact cement, I don't even know if that would be possible. So make sure you keep that glue just to the edge. So because I have my spacing marked on my template piece, I have all the holes marked here, I know that these punch holes are going to be lined up because when I punched it, I just followed those marks. So I don't have to worry about putting needles through the first hole or any of these holes to make sure it's lined up because I can just press these pieces together and I know it's going to work. I'm soft by a half a mil or so, it doesn't really matter. So, when we fold this together, we should see that the pockets match up perfectly. And you don't see anything, the edges are more or less perfectly even. There's going to be a variation obviously because I cut this by hand. So you can actually see there's a little bit of a tiny lip right there, but we'll get that cleaned up with a Dremel tool after the fact. I'm using this beige 0.6 millimeter Ritza Tiger Thread, and I'm probably going to go five times my length. So we'll just measure this out. I'm going to go from this side. So we're about nine inches. So we'll do 18 is two, four, five. That should be plenty. I don't need to do any fancy math. Five times almost always works. I've never had an issue with that. You're dealing with three layers of one and a half mil leather coming out just under five inches, four and a, or mil, four and a half mil, five times your length is plenty. I always on air, air on the side of caution, so I prefer to have extra than not enough. Okay, we're going ultra wide on this, so you guys can see what I'm doing. So because We've punched from both sides. We don't have to cast or stitch. So we just come through. No casting. You guys have seen stitching before. There's nothing new here. Just work my way through this and then we'll come back when I'm finished stitching this and we'll finish off those edges. Okay, so we're all stitched up. This is Ritza, so we can just simply uh, melt our thread. 
put it into that hole, and then we can hammer these threads down. And then we are ready to uh, ready to finish these edges. So if you ask me why a double punch, let me give you a close up of this. So you can see there's not really a discernible difference between the front and the back. That's exactly why. Punching through the outside and the inside and then stitching that way just gives a really nice, clean, polished look. So worth a little extra effort to, bu bu to uh, double punch, in my opinion. And there she is. Simple little bifold wallet. No scabbing necessary. Nice edge. Simple, functional cards, bills, whatever you need to carry. Also be sure to check the description for some of the current offers from my favorite suppliers. And be sure to leave your questions and comments in the comments section below. I get back to everybody as soon as I can. So if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for topics, let me know. And as usual, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.